this is another project I wanted to get at. Um, this room in here is a den. There's no doorway on it. Um, there is a storage closet way up high. And this is cathedral ceiling. We got about a 16 by 3 foot opening here. And the doors in this house are a birch, solid panel birch. And um, I think what I want to do is make this into a bedroom. And to make a legal bedroom, you've got to have a closet. And as we enter the door here, there's a closet, coat closet. But I'll need to build a closet inside this room. And I need to put a door on it. Well, right now, we get some uh, daylight from the other windows in this den. And the only thing we're using this room for now is a catch-all, sort of office catch-all. And it's got up above windows, lets some light in. And it brings it into our entrance here, which is kind of kind of nice. Um, and then there's a transom window over the door. So I think what I'm going to try is to put a door on here, make some trim. This is like a fur um, custom trim. It's a beveled edges and, uh, you know, stained like a golden oak. I'm going to try to replicate that. I want to make up a bunch of that for some doors and then uh, and casing and jams. And then I'm thinking about transom, uh, not a window, but maybe the glass blocks to allow some more light into this hallway rather than block this from here off with drywall. That's about 16 feet high. And the project I did recently was uh, put a take down the old style fan, put up a light, paint the hallways, uh, paint the stairwell, paint the ceiling. Quite a project because of the height in here. So it's starting to look pretty good. But we still have this office slash study library that is a catch-all. And I'd like to put a door on it, make it private, turn it into a bedroom. So let's uh, calculate, draw up some plans, get a material list, and uh, see what it's going to take to tackle this project. And to match this job, I want to make some lumber. These are two and a half inch wide casings by three quarter and a three eighths chamfer on the sides. So these doors are going to be next to each other. I want them to mimic. And the jam is going to be three quarters by four and nine sixteenths. I want to use a 30 inch door so it'll match the uh, bathroom door over here on the other side. And the uh, baseboards Let's see here. These are four inch exact and they're chamfered at the top. And so I wanna go out and make enough to be able to do this. Maybe some extra um, in case I don't like the finish on them. All right, I went out in the shed here and I went through some of my cold pack boards. I buy some of these um, this one I obviously cut out already, but this was broken in a cold pack. And some of them are odd sizes. This is five and a half, the five and five eighths, four and a half. You know, we got some odd balls. We got a two and a half, so it's a one by three. But you see here, it's cracked. So I'm going to try to do careful math. And go through this material and use the least amount that I could to do this project. So I come up with this little plan here. I don't know if you can see this. It's 34 degrees out here. We got a little bit more snow last night. Sun's out. March. So it's feeling good. I'm not here in my Sunday clothes. Um, what I've got is this is the 36 inch width opening. It's exactly 36 drywall to drywall. That little closet that we saw was up in this area. Um, this height is 13.5. This height is 14.4. Four. 
and I want to put a 30 inch door in there and it'll match the bathroom door everything right there I think almost all the doors are 30s wish they were larger but this opening is only 36 and so I need to put a 2x4 frame 2x4 frame possibly two on one side three quarter inch three quarter inch jam it'll look like this and then um this is my my rough uh dimensions here um my baseboard has to be four inches exact it's got to have a chamfer off one edge the uh casing needs to be two and a half and then they have to be chamfered on both sides and then mitered at the top and then uh what i want to do is over cut these I'd like to cut the exact width, but the lengths do longer. Um, the doorway, like I said, we're gonna, I think I'm going to have the door swing to the right because the light switch is on the left. And so I'm probably going to want a single 2x4 here. I'm probably going to want a double 2x4 over here on the hinge side. And that'll give me 3 inches of room for the knob. Then I want to do my 3 quarter inch jam, 3 quarter inch jam, 3 quarter inch jam. A 30 inch door and then as I discussed all that light comes into that hallway so I think I want to do um, I'm not even worried about a header really but I'll probably come up about three or four inches maybe I'll do a double two by top plate here and then I want to do a glass block and I bought some at a garage sale and I'm gonna see if I like them it's a different design the rest of this will have to frame off in two by two by It'll be a two before wall and then drywall. And then um, the pieces I come up with is I need two one by five by 81s, two one by five by 84s, one by five by 36. These are overcut sizes, so I'm going to see what I can get the least amount of waste. I need a little bit of baseboard. I need door stops at one and a half by one half. And then, um, so I want to rip cut these. And, um, We'll get a start on it here. It's pretty nice out right now. So looking at my list. The jams are going to be a 2 by 4 wall with drywall on either side. So they're going to be 4 and 9 16 This is 4 and a half, so this may not be able to work. This one, 5 and a half can. This one, we've got about 30... Three inches before the damage so we might be able to get the uh, top jam and then one of the sides out of this I got a real nice looking one I probably should be using this one even have a knot in it. this is considered clear there's a little check in here in the end got one knot on the back side I probably should be using this, but I don't think we can get, let me see what we got for legs here. I'm going to have 14. Would you believe I got 14.3? So I got to have 80 and 80. I think I'm going to end up using this. This will be a nice clear jam. That'll look nice. The door will probably be open most of the time. So I'll get a circular saw or chop saw so I can cut it down a little bit more manageable. I set the table saw to two and a half. And I want to run up some of these one by threes I got here. And they're a little bit oversized. I want to trim these off. And then I want to, like I said, I always like to use the smallest lumber.
there's a little nick out of this right here and that might work out good for our chamfer and that's just about where the 45 will be so there's one casing and then the second one is about an eight footer and this is in pretty good shape except remember this call pack it's got a splitter out of it and that's will work good in our advantage with the uh, chamfer again So I think that'll go away when I do the chamfer. That's nice. And so there's two. And now I gotta see if I can use these cuts, like this one. This end is narrower, I can tell, than two and a half, which is kind of a bummer. It's two and an eighth. This side, three and a quarter. And this down here is two and five eighths and there's a notch out of it so that might that may not work because quite a notch goes back all the way to two inches so if i want to use this side it'd be quite a bit of waste because there's 64. um i can't get my my well I guess I could get my head jam out of this, but if I did that, I'd be cutting across here and here. I don't know if that'd give me enough for, it's only 30 inches. I'm gonna need about 32. Let me do a thinker on that. And I got a couple more little boards in there I'll grab. Let me use the smallest stuff. I think this broken one here, looks like they hit it with a forklift. I think this will work, actually. I'll run this through instead. I'm trying to be frugal. an inch and a half I can use for doorstop. That's where that split was. And then this one is a little crack right on the edge. Almost wouldn't be visible with a chamfer. So to measure that for sure I know I can get at least a, a head out of it, and I'll do it long, it'll give me like a 37 or 8, if I flop it around. It probably won't work on this end, but I could probably use, I hate to use this whole thing for a doorstop, that's a lot of waste then. I think I can get at least one out of this. So that would give me the complete outside of the casing. And then let me go, and that would be the door stop. 
Let me go and see what I can get out of this one. And I'll go in and get some smaller pieces and see what I can come up with. It's about saving money here. I decided to cut this other one because we had the saw marks in it from a previous cut somewhere. A little bit of damage on this side. So I think I'm going to cut probably this side off. And I'm going to make the jams. And they're going to be 4 and 9 sixteenths for a 2 by 4 wall. <laughs> run them through the cleaner ones just to clean them up because they got foot marks on them people walked on them they're at the store pencil lines on it so here's here's our head jam and then this 14 foot board that was like super clear it looks nice um Probably be using it this way. I don't know. It's a good looking board. <laughs> Cut either side. I don't think it matters. Cut blades nice and sharp. So there's our our top and one side. Now we gotta do this side. This is the worst of it. it has one knot in it. Nothing on top. But it's got this booger out of it. So I think I think I might be able to cut that right off. Yep. But just like this, I'll end up with two beautiful looking. <laughs> looks like a wormhole gone so now we got two side jams and we got one top okay so that's complete so then you go to your list check it off <laughs> so you don't end up cutting more than we need I lost my pen and uh, got my pen Alright, I decided to cut the other two casings out of this broken board. I'll set this one to the side. I can rip this down. These are going to be two and a half. And there's no damage on this side. There's a little damage on this side.
I just use a sinker to try to cut the wind. So this gives us three jams, or I'm sorry, three cases, and then I think I'll use this cut for my straight edge. There's a little damage there. Run them through the joiner one pass just to clean them up. So that will give us four casings and two head casings. So that will finish the casing up. There's our jam, there's our casing. Now we're going to work on the door stops. And we got to go all the way around. They're going to be an inch and a half. And then I probably will rip them down to about half inch or so. Now I'm going to rip the rest of the door stops, and then they're way too chunky, so I'll probably be ripping them down to just about a half an inch. set the blade thickness here, here so half inch I'll get that set up now it's set to half and I got the blade just just above I don't like it so high it's out in the way and this board here I pre-painted for a project never used I think it was down at the church so when I rip it I can rip the paint right off it and then we're gonna playing them anyway and then we still have to chan for them so quite a few steps yet so I'm going to take the worst side and get rid of it right now thinner boards like this I don't want to hurt my push sticks and I don't want to hurt my fingers so I just shut it off and do it the opposite direction <laughs>
I use these for shims. Alright, and um, so these will end up pretty nice after I plane them. Last one here. run down my list see what we got over here I think we got a three door stop two sides and the top we've got our our jams our two sides and our top and then we've got a casing Two short casings. This one's extra, I believe. And we got four outside casings. So now we just got to make some baseboard. And if I cut out the existing baseboard where it is, and I'm able to miter it without damaging it, then I don't really need any baseboard. But I better cut it, get it ready in case I damage taking this off. Yeah, I got one. A piece that was broken there. I think this will work out good. I'll just make whatever I can get out of it. And we'll use this for the base. This side has a couple sap marks. This has a knot on the bottom. Sap there. So I think I'll cut this edge off. What I like to do is run my board over. A lot of people leave the blade way up like that, but if you ever slip, you're going to take bone. I like it up just enough to say so. So if you ever happen to cut, you're going to get flesh if anything, but I'm trying to pay attention and not ever have that happen. So I want to get this at four inches. Exact, so it matches inside. We'll see how much we can get out of this. Cut this to length and then this will be ready for our chamfer. So I'm going to set up our chamfer 45s next. So what we got to do is we got to take the baseboard and do one chamfer 45 halfway up. So it'll be 3 eighths off. And then our casing is going to have both edges. And then our door stop, there's no drawing, door stop is going to have one edge with a you know so it matches with that chamfer so i'll set this up i set this up at a 45 degree i slid the fence over so that when it exits it's going to exit approximately in the middle <laughs>
and that's what the baseboard looks like in the house. 45, half over. I'll sand that. And then this will, I might run it through the planer once. I don't want it too thin, but I want to clean it up. So I'm going to run each one through like that. And each one, the casing and the, and the stops are going to have to have a different setting, different thickness or width. So I ran one of the casings through, and that's the look we're getting, going for. And we got to do both sides. So that's what they look like. And that's all the custom trim in the house is like that. So I'm going to sand these up. I'll run them all through here. All the casings should be the same. So now I just repeat cut. I think it'll look pretty good so I'll just run all these off and show you at the end here all right I got all the casings cut and now I gotta do the door stops they all need a chamfer on them and then I'll probably get out a hand plane and plane the edge before I sand it I might run them through the surface planer I'm not sure yet I decided to plane it because I'm lazy um, these boards have been thrown around they got little nicks in them dirt marks whatever and I think I'm just going to run them through here and see if it'll clean them up <laughs> does a pretty good job that's all I want to do is just kind of do that before I do any final sanding get it true get it cleaned I'm gonna run them all through and on the uh, jams I only need to do one side well, I only need to do one side anyway but I need to do one side that is the best side I guess it's already got some snipe marks factory stuff um so i'll run it through and clean these up
definitely what a difference. I won't bore you and break your ears running these through. Should probably get my headphones on for my ears. All right, guys, I got everything planed up. They turned out pretty nice. Um, just run them through, and that's the back side. And then um, one of the knots caught in the planer and fell out, so I made one complete new board. And um, other than that, everything's here, all of our pieces. And uh, so now I just got to get the planer. I'll probably use a hand plane on this bevel, or I'll put it in the uh, um, all right, I got everything planed up here. One knot got caught in a planer. I heard it go snipe and it caught and broke it. So um, I'll use that for an extra and I can use it for a top or something. And as far as the casing, I made a complete new one. And so we got all of our pieces, everything on our list here. And now the only thing I need to do is clean up these 45 edges and a uh, little light sanding and they're ready for finish. And I might put them on the joiner because my joiner bevels. That'll make a quick job of that. Looking through my uh, pile of lumber and materials, um, I had purchased these doors. Um, I think I bought like eight of them for 50 bucks at a garage sale. And this is a 32 by 80. And we need a 30. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the size I need and I believe the finish size is somewhere between 29 and 7 8 and 30 inches I don't think they're quite 30 and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and rip the door and then I'm gonna take this 2x2 two two skin and peel that off slide that in re-glue it and end up with a door that we can use for I say I got five, I don't know if I bought a dozen doors, I don't know, quite a few of them. So I got five or ten dollars in a door. Right now doors are kind of pricey, and if I had bought a pre-hung uh, birch door is what I wanted, but a pre-hung birch door, you know, it might be near two hundred dollars right now. So all this here, I think I paid for the call pack approximately fifty dollars, and there was... Um, I don't know if there was 40 boards in it. It's quite a lot. Various stuff. A couple oak boards. There was some trim. Some aluminum fascia that we use for my son's building over there. And um, so, you know, we probably got 15, less than $20 in materials to do this project so far. I do have to purchase a lock set. I might have one, but purchase one to kind of match the house. And then I... I got a, I, th I might have the hinges too, but I want to get some hinges that look decent that match our three and a half and the curved hinges. And um, I'll have to get some stain. I got stain, but probably not the right color. So I'll get some testing stain and some more polyurethane. And um, I want to sand these up, get them all looking decent, cut this door down and do all the finishing and um, probably three coats of poly on them before I can install anything. Okay guys, I'm in the crowded shed here. Um, <laughs> we want to get this sanded off. And I went and looked for my hand planer and I misplaced it at the moment. And I don't really want to sand it because I'd like to keep a nice sharp edge here. If I get the sander out, I know I'll bevel them over, round them over more. So I got this set. As you can see, this needs waxing again. But, um, I got this set at a 45 and a 64th of an inch, and I want to feed that through there. It's going to be kind of difficult because it's low, but let's see what we got here.
guys got a little bit of a snipe there. I'm gonna, I think I'll lessen that about just a little bit. edges, all the chamfers, through the um, the joiner. I ran it through the joiner on a bevel, and these small ones are kind of tough because they're pretty close to your fingers, so I was just careful, but they look pretty good. Now just some final sanding on all this, and I'll start cutting the door down. Okay, I got a little lost footage here, but we got a little snow outside again today, so... I'm staying inside the house because I want it warm. I didn't want to heat the shop up. There's too many projects in the way. And I uh, wanted this stain to dry quick. So the color we chose is the uh, Minwax Colonial Maple 223. That is really close to the existing trim that we have here. And so I want to get this to dry today and then I want to probably do three coats of polyurethane on everything and everything is cut long so you know it still has to be cut yet but uh let me show you how nice this takes just using an old sock here but this is uh this is pretty and because it's a soft wood you don't want to leave your stain on too long and it soaks in relatively fast so I just use the sock and then I come back through wipe off the excess and boy they're pretty so there we have it there's our colors I'm gonna set them aside to dry turn a fan on and if the fumes get too much I'll take them out in the shop and find a spot to let them dry but um, trying to take advantage of the day here. Get this done. Tiger's helping. Everything's stained up here. It seems like a lot of pieces for one door, but that's what we need. Um, there is one extra piece of casing. There was a knot on that one right there that fell out of that. So I can either use it for a head casing or, you know, I don't know, extra or future sample. But um, I marked the back so I know the color. Now I gotta let this dry and then figure out which polyurethane I want to use. Water base, oil base, probably a satin finish. All right, a little progress report. We got um, the two befores framed out for this opening, and I left a little opening for the glass panels these are the glass um they're three eighths of an inch thick i got them at a garage sale they're uh what were they 25 cents each or all of them for a buck and a half for the box and i bought the box and 
they look new to me. There's no joint compound on them or nothing. So I'm pretty happy. I think I can get three panels across there. And then here's a sliding closet door next to it. That's where I want to line up the door and the trim. And I've got, didn't have room enough to do a double two before like I was going to because I decided to keep the door a 32 inch. And on this side, there's just going to be a, a jam and a door stop, you know. And on this side, we're going to have um, uh, the hinge side and then the knob will go against this wall and that'll give me almost three inches so the knob you know the door would be about straight when it's open and uh, these two befores um, I took apart a sunroom last year and they're used and they were aqua in color and I thought it kind of weird looking even though it wouldn't hurt anything I just threw some open um, ceiling paint I had from my project I used about a pint of paint and I just threw a coat of paint on it so it looked better during construction here. And uh, now I got to get some drywall, close this wall off. On the glass panels, I think I'm going to do a uh, um, like a C channel, maybe aluminum. I got a break, maybe I can bend some. Um, something to cap the ends. And then this closet, that storage closet, that would be accessible up on the inside here. And. Uh, so it doesn't affect anything there. I don't have to change it. I just put some Christmas items up in there. Just something really used. So we're moving along pretty good here. We got the drywall. Got two sheets a half inch. Dawson's mark in the stud location. We got one in the center. It wouldn't work out good if we did 69 center. There'd be a little piece up there. So I just put one in the center. And then go and come from the top down. There's one more mark. And then we're going to pre-start some screws, and then i got to go up the ladder. Dawson's going to help me, and we'll screw that on there. And we're going to keep the transom part open. The leftover piece off this, we can uh, use down this strip on both sides. All right, guys. We got... Dawson, help me here a little bit. I got out my... Uh rigid screw gun. I'm having a lot of trouble with the tips in it. I, I don't like that. It's not driving proper. So let me hand you, the, hand you this. And um, I'm going back to the old way. And I do have a dimple bit for this that I cannot locate at the moment. So I'm just going to be careful. I want to put a screw about every 10-12 inches. You want to set it just below the surface. You don't want to tear the paper. And then, uh, well, as you can see, what we're going to do is uh, i got to mud it, I'm going to tape and mud it, and then um, probably end up doing like three coats. It's going to span out over my new wall surface here, the one I painted. This is going to be the caramel color. And then um, the, uh, the glass panels will fit right in here, and I'm going to use a little channel on that. I haven't figured that out yet. And then it'll be ready for our door and our casing, so I'll work on that after I get this screwed on. I might even get a coat of mud on this tonight so it can dry. The first coat takes a while, you know. Uh, this is as far up as the ladder will go. Want to make sure your screws are under. I'm using one of my old guns that doesn't have a light on it. careful you're not going to tear the paper a drill I tend to go too fast with and the impact I can it's noisy but I can control it a little bit easier how's it looking guys what do you think Dawson will this pass your inspection yeah I think that I think that glass panels will be a cool little, a little light in at the top here. Yeah, I'm getting excited to get a separate room down here where it's private. So if we want 
more guests to stay over, there's an additional room too, you know? Yep. So we'll end up with how many bedrooms? All right, I got a lot of screws between, uh, you know, six, eight inches apart. She's up there. It's kind of random. So I want to get a first coat of mud on this tonight. Give it a good chance to set up. And uh, this isn't easy. It's going to be a little sloppy. I don't have good balance. Of course, I'm in my slippers. But um, I'm going to get your first coat on here. I used mesh tape. It's a little bit stronger. It's not going to crack anyway because I have super ton of screws in it and the uh, framing members are good and tight. So smooth it on there pretty good. It's a good word. And then I want to probably over the weekend come back with a metal knife and uh, just give it a light scraping. Smooth her out and then Use a wider knife. I'll probably finish up with a wider knife right now just to make it look smoother. And uh, But first coat, I just want to get it pushed in there. Get a little dab on the screw heads. And then this will set up pretty good by tomorrow. And maybe before the NASCAR race, I can put another coat on it on Sunday. And then we'll get down to a, uh, I probably won't sand this. I'll probably sponge it, sponge sand, because I don't want the dust after doing all this paint work recently. And uh, the floors tend to get a little bit dirty, but that's not a problem. And, uh, but I don't want the dust everywhere. So I'll show you the next progress. I'm gonna get a wider knife and smooth that out. All right, Dawson just put on some pieces of drywall here, the three inch and oh, two and a quarter, I think, to uh, piece that out. And I just put the second coat of joint compound on it. Now I have to let this set up. I turned the fan on, speed this along and um, I think tomorrow I'll just skim it off a little bit and then I'll put a final coat on and then I'll sponge sand it and then I can prime and paint and then we'll come up with a plan on these glass windows here. Okay, here's the finished product. I had three coats of joint compound. It turned out pretty nice. Uh, two coats of paint. It blends in really well. Always looked like it was there. The next step in this process is to uh, frame out a door. We're going to make it out of the custom trim to match the closet over here. And uh, it may not be exact, but I'm going to try to get it looking like it was always here. And it'll be great to have an additional bedroom, and uh, especially on the main level. And follow along with the next video, and we'll see you on the next one.